Typically, I use this spring die under the power hammer to round up the shanks on my larger holdfasts. Unfortunately, the power hammer has been out of commission now for about six weeks because the cylinder needed to be rebuilt and it hadn't come back from the, the place that's rebuilding it for me. So i got to find something else to do because I've got a bunch of these I need to get done, need to get shipped. So what's my other alternative? Now, typically, I get them to this point where they're way oversized under the hydraulic press. But it's not a very precise tool. It really wants to squish things too far in one direction and it's hard to have a whole lot of fine control and even putting this die under here it can be done but it's sort of a cramped position and it still tends to make it way too oval too easily and it's slow because the press is fairly slow and it just really isn't working as well as I'd like. Eventually I'd get there but it's not as fast and efficient as the power hammer is. Now the treble hammer is certainly an option. I can use this same die under the treble hammer. And this allows me to turn it 90 degrees every blow and work fairly quickly. And this is certainly going to get the job done. But by the time I do a dozen of these, my legs are going to be quite worn out. So I may do some of it under there, but I don't think I want to do all of it. And I still think there might be a better tool. Well, I hope you guys heard some of that. I bought this really nice new mic system. But oddly, it doesn't seem to work very well, and I forget to plug the receiver into the camera. I think that better tool is going to be the fly press. It's quick. It has a lot of force. It wants to go down on its own, so there's not as much muscle power needed to do that much work under the fly press. But if it doesn't work perfectly, I can still go back to the treadle hammer. The trouble is, I don't have a die that will do my 11 sixteenths round shank for the fly press. So the first thing we need to do is make a die for the fly press. And to do that, we'll do most of it under the hydraulic press. Oh yeah, welcome back to Black Bear Forge. For our dies. I've got this piece of 4140. It's inch and a quarter wide, two inches long, and I think that will be ideal to make the dies. I'm going to go cut two pieces two inches long. Well, we've got two of these cut. We'll put these in the forge. I also have a piece of round bar the size that I want these dies to be and that's 11 sixteenths round in this case for hold fast that fit a three quarter inch hole and this will be my forming tool. It's just mild steel nothing special it only has to do two impressions.
now have our two die halves, two swedges, and I can check that with a piece of round bar the size that I want my finished piece to be and make sure it fits. If anything, these are going to be a bit too small, so I may go back to that small wheel on the grinder and grind these a little bit more, but probably after they're completely assembled, hardened, and tempered so that they fit exact when I'm all done with it. Now you could just take your material and clamp it up with a little card space or a little business card, something like that in between, and drill them on the drill press. By putting that spacer in there, the drill bit will want to follow center and split the hole on either side, giving you two perfectly sized die blocks, except for the thickness of the card, which isn't much. But I decided I'd just like to forge them out on the hydraulic press. I still had to grind them and clean them up. These top edges need to be relieved back so it doesn't pinch the edges of the material as you forge it down to size. Because it's too big, that material's got to have a place to go as you rotate it. Once it gets down to size, it doesn't matter so much. But since I'm starting oversized, you've got to have that relief area or you're going to really mess things up before you get to what you want. Now to use these in the fly press, the bottom die will need a little base plate that has just enough material that I can get one of these clamps on it through the T-slots in the fly press base. And if the base plate's big enough, I should be able to turn it different directions depending on how I want to approach the fly press. I don't always have to approach it straight on or from the side. If I want to come in at a 45 degree angle, I can just reorient the die. And that's one advantage to the way the fly press works. The top die needs a one inch round shank because my fly press has a one inch hole in the, the ram. And it'll look something like this. This is actually a punch. But I'll take a one inch round and I'll weld it to the top. And I weld a collar on there that bears on the, the bottom of the ram so that I don't accidentally upset the top of this shank inside the hole. So I leave a, a quarter inch gap or so at the top of the hole. All the pressure goes down to this collar and that way I'm pushing on the collar and I'm not upsetting this and taking a chance on getting a tool stuck. I've done some tools without the collar and I've never got them stuck, but it's just a little bit of insurance that I think is worth doing. So I'm going to go off to the welding table. I'm going to weld these up. Then we're going to try them in the fly press real quick to see how they work. After that, if everything looks right, then I'll harden them and temper them. Part of the welding process, because this is 4140 steel, it's a, an alloy steel, it welds better if you preheat it first. So I'm going to preheat them in the forge to four, five, 600 degrees. I'm not going to bother to measure it. I'm just going to get them hot, clamp them to whatever they need to be clamped to, weld them up, and then uh, we'll put them back in the forge, give them a post heat and a cool down, and then we'll try them out. If everything looks right, I'll harden them, temper them, then do the final grind on them. Well, we've got a top and a bottom die. Let's put them in the fly press and see if they work. So I'm going to start by putting the top die in the, the press. Sometimes we run out of room if the bottom dies in there. So I want to make sure it's in first. This press I've got fit up with an extra tool holder here. And this just guarantees if you do get a tool stuck that it's not stuck in the ram of the press where it's really going to be a problem to, to fix. The tool holder could be sacrificial if you had to, but probably you could take it out of there and put the tool in a vise and knock it out with a hammer or something if you had to. So it's, it's a nice addition to the fly press. Sometimes it's too long and you have to take it out, so it's not always in there. That's really all we need to do with that. And then to make sure this lines up on the round, I'll put my sample stock in there. And that guarantees it lines up. And I can clamp this down. And 
This should guarantee that my die doesn't move. And I'll go get some material hot and we'll try this out. It still doesn't quite come together, so I definitely still have to do a little bit of grinding down in the bottom and make the hole bigger or clamp them up and run a drill bit through, either way. I think this definitely has some good potential. I think I need to get the bar a little bit closer before I come to the, the dies and just use these as a final fitting, which is what I typically do into the power hammer. But if the dies will do this, they'll do that. And that's just the way stuff like this goes. A little bite, turn it 90 degrees, and Turn it around, move it in and out. Well, there's a look at making a tool for the fly press. I hope that I get a lot of good use out of that. I may still do some of these under the treadle hammer. It'll be a little back and forth. It's always a, a bit of a learning curve when you try to switch methods. I, de I develop the techniques I use for various projects based on the tooling that is available and what the best tool for the job happens to be. And when one of those tools is no longer available or down for repairs as it is now, I kind of have to reinvent the wheel. And I might have changed the way I make these holdfasts if I didn't have the power hammer in the first place. I'm not sure. I might have gone to the fly press right from the start, but I may not have. Or I may have flat dies for the little giant, which might be an option for doing some of this. But to make use of the tools I have, I've made these little dies and hopefully they will work just fine. If you're thinking about making tooling for some of the equipment you have in your shop, I hope this was helpful. Hope you enjoyed it and can give it a thumbs up. Love it if you hit that subscribe button if you haven't done that already. But remember, get out to your shop, make something, stay safe, wear your safety glasses, and we'll see you for the next one.